Stella Pangilinan, our UX workshop facilitator, is currently a UX designer at Summit Media and a fellow at User Experience Philippines or UXPH, collaborating on a study on the state of UX in the country. Wow! <laughs> With UX design experience from London, New York, and Spain, her passion for teaching design for social good and relating it to real-world problem-solving, as well as tennis, is what keeps her going. Okay, great. Okay. So, all right. Um, hop on the mirror board. Check it out. Um, everything for the workshop is prepared on here, including resources for you guys to look at, cool tips if you're a designer or if you want to know more about inclusive design, some definitions, and the activity. So I'm really happy to be here. I'm super excited for this. Um, inclusive design is something I feel really strongly about. Having a younger brother with autism and having experience of working in different um, countries and different cultures and being exposed to that cultural barrier. No? So um, I'm really excited to talk about how inclusivity is going to make us better designers, technologists, researchers, or even um, better individuals. So. Okay, still can't screen share, but no worries. Okay, I got 27 of you guys on the board. This is awesome. Feel free to explore. Um, I guess we can start with our icebreaker um, while people are trying to get into the um, into the mirror board. I've sent the link on, on the chat. I'm gonna send it again for anyone if you guys have just come in right now. So great, okay, if you're in the mirror board, I'd like you guys to find um, the first, uh, there's a, there should be an image that says start here, no? And you're going to find this one um, screen that asks, what is inclusive design? And I'd really love it if you guys could take a sticky note or a shape or whatever. You guys have complete, total freedom to do whatever you want on this board. No? And write in your thoughts, like what is inclusive design for you? When we say it, have you heard of it before? Have you read up on it? Have you read any books about it? It would be awesome to see what you guys write. So this is so cool. 35 of you guys on the board right now. This is so fun. And just so you know, um, if you know, if you kind of are the type of person who reads ahead, wants to know like the answer to everything before um, the workshop begins, you're free to do that as well. Explore the board, check it out, add resources, add notes, um, comment on something that you you don't agree with, something you agree with, something you like. Um, that would be super awesome to see. All right, let's see if I can share screen. Okay, not yet. Um, that's completely fine. So um, I'm gonna give you guys a minute. I want to see what you guys are writing. Let's see. A design that applies to everyone, nice one. Designing for people, easily accessible. This is great, nice. I feel like the title itself is very self-explanatory, you know, inclusive design. Being compassionate to everyone's needs, love that. Interviewing people outside of your circles, multiple perspectives, designing for a purpose. That's nice, a nice hint of intentionality there. That's great, that's awesome. All right, so I'm really happy that you guys mentioned ideas no? along the lines of open-mindedness and diversity because that's what inclusive design is really all about. No? So um, let's see one last time. One last time if we got the screen sharing. Okay. Um, yes, actually, if someone from WITA could share the board itself, that would be awesome since everything works them on in one progression that way. Um, that would be great. All right, okay, nice. All right, there we go. Okay, so thank you so much, you guys, for putting your answers in. I think, you know, even if we're going to be moving on to the presentation, it would be awesome to see your ideas. Just put them out wherever you want the presentation. So anyway, as I said earlier, a lot of the words that you guys mentioned here, no? Um, designing for a purpose, designing that applies to everyone, accessibility, people. Um, I'm so glad you, you guys put this because that's exactly no, what inclusive design is. So if we kind of break down the definition, let's um, pan towards the right, your right, my right. There we go. Okay, so inclusive design is a method of creative problem solving for the widest possible range of human diversity. So let's move again to the right. Thank you so much. So again, this can be expressed in the form of an app, a product, a service, um, an experience or an interaction that is used by people of different backgrounds, different contexts, different um, experiences. So moving on to the next portion. Um, and in order for us to be able to build these kinds of solutions, no? these kinds of products, these kinds of services, we need to have a solid understanding of people. And data is what helps us achieve that. 
So um, that's where quantitative and qualitative um, data, uh, data is extremely vital as they help us achieve a more open-minded perspective of others outside of our own biases. So moving on, as designers and creators, what happens when we rely too much on our personal biases? Sorry, if you, yes, there we go. There we go, this example right here. So when we rely too much on our personal biases, the result is that we make products that immediately at face value exclude others. So a lot of products that we actually interact with today on a daily basis um, already assume that our, its users are fully able. So a perfect example is this photo. This is um, Microsoft designer John Porter's wall of exclusion, where he showcases um, gaming console controllers that presume their players have two properly functioning hands. So this is a unique edge case now, but it's a perfect example of how designers have the capability to make rules, subliminal rules about who plays and who doesn't. We have to understand that we hold the risk of building products that can subtly polarize and exclude specific groups. And if we're not attentive, we can do that blindly. So moving on to the next portion, I'm gonna try and quickly skim through this guys, huh? because we don't have a lot of time. Um, so just gonna quickly skim through this portion. These are some practical principles that you can apply in your own workflow and that you can read in your own time. So guys, if you got ideas, if you disagree with any of these topics or, or thoughts, like put your post-its in. If you have experience of doing this and what you learned doing that, that would be awesome. So again, um, the main summary here of these particular principles, um, you can move forward. There's another slide right there, here. So these principles in particular, um, um, help us build more inclusive products because the best feedback and the best involvement that we can find as we're building our products now comes from people who have greatly experienced exclusion. If we don't involve them in the process, then who are we designing for really? It's important to have difficult conversations with people about exclusion and to see and understand how they engage or disengage with the different products, services, experiences, or people that they interact with on a daily basis. When we co-design with our users, we give them representation, we give them a voice in the entire design process. We always have to ask ourselves, now when we're creating something, whose narrative are we representing? Are, is it our narrative or is it that of the people we're creating for? So let's move on. Again, guys, skimming through this, huh? you can always read back if you got any questions, like put them down, it'd be super awesome to see. So, um, sorry, moving on, moving on from here. There. Okay, great. So I'm not gonna dive really deep into this, but on this board, you will find examples of where inclusive design is practiced and constantly working to be achieved, no? So if we could zoom in on that photo with the bird, this is a very simple, plain example that I really love. It's closed captioning, okay? Closed captioning on video players, it's the feature of adding subtitles for video content, and it was originally made for people who are deaf and hard of hearing. However, someone who is learning a new language or watching a video in a noisy room might find this feature to be extremely helpful. So if we move towards the left, sorry, thanks so much. Huh? If we move towards the left, sorry, the other, other side, other side, sorry, yeah, we go back, we go back. Here we go, here we go. So um, identifying different situational challenges comes, um, helps us come up with viable solutions for people in different contexts. So what am I trying to say here? Closed captioning is originally designed for people who are deaf, hard of hearing, no? Um, however, um, it's a design that is able to um, work for people from different accessibility needs. So you, you guys might say, you know, um, one billion people of the population, of one billion people are disabled. That doesn't account for everybody, but inclusive design takes into consideration that every person in this world will experience an, an accessibility need one way or the other. I might not be deaf, but one time I might be in a noisy room and I need to watch a video of importance, no? So that's what inclusive design is all about. It's about getting people from different contexts, different backgrounds, and putting them within the same conversation and space. All right, kind of quick, kind of fast. Um, let's zoom out um, quickly. So what we're going to do for our workshop today is exactly that, okay? Um, I've got some instructions here that you guys can quickly dive into. All right, so what we're going to do for the workshop today, again, you can do this in groups or you can do it individually. You know, it's, it's, it's up to you. Um, but we're going to try and look at different products that we engage with on a daily basis, no? 
um, and see which perspectives may have been excluded in the process of building these projects, uh, these, these products. So in your groups, each group will represent an accessibility need, whether that's a visual, mobile, auditory, speech, or cognitive impairment. And then on the left hand of the screen, sorry, if we move a bit to the... Yes, over here, you guys have some little data points. Sorry, sorry, um, move up. Sorry. There we go. You guys have some data points and design tips that you guys can look at to get um, ideas, um, some extra resources for you guys to look at as we're ideating on answering the guide questions and how can we design um, or improve products that we engage with for more people. So um, again, the goal is to look at examples that we see on a daily basis. Now on each board, I've put some examples for you guys. Uh, but again, you're free to choose other examples that you think are, are a better fit. But the goal is to evaluate these products, you know, and to ask questions that involve other people in the discussion. So um, you can find all of this information here. Um, there are going to be facilitators helping you guys out and guiding you through the questions. I'm also going to be bouncing around answering questions if you guys have any concerns or thoughts. But the idea is that you guys just go creative by asking questions. Who can we um, design this feature for? Who is overlooked in this particular design process? So again, each group will represent a demographic. Let's say I am going to be in the group that is focusing on, on users who have an accessibility need of visual impairment. And um, the, the prompt that is given is content creation. So the questions I'm going to be asking are, how can someone who um, who in, um, experiences this kind of need um, engage with the content creation product? How have content creation products overlooked that particular user? Okay, so again, um, all this information is on the board. Sorry if it's messy. Like, don't worry if you guys, um, you know, are are messing stuff up. Just leave it as is. That's completely fine. Um, there will be facilitators to help out. I'll be helping out. But this is supposed to be fun creative, ask wild questions, like throw in references, GIFs, emojis, do whatever you guys want. But this is supposed to be just some kind of ideation um, activity where you guys think of another user in mind. Okay, so let's start. Um, I don't know if we have a lot of time, but let's, let's see what we can do with the time given. All right, thank you so much.